Creating a truly memorable video game character takes more work than just the right look at the right time. And even the most talented character artists rarely nail things the first time around. Like the rest of game development, character design is an iterative process. You try something, test it, and then refine and revise until it works. And thank goodness the early concepts for these now iconic characters went through the revision process, because some of them just… Oof. If you play a lot of video games, you absolutely know the following men, women, and assorted creatures, but you probably wouldn't recognize them based on their early designs. Fair warning, though, you may just want a memory wipe after laying eyes on some of these guys. The Little Sisters, Bioshock. Even diehard Bioshock fans might not know that their favorite pint-sized atom collectors weren't always called Little Sisters, partly because they didn't start off as young girls at all. The Gatherers, as they were originally named, were slimy slugs. The problem with that, Bioshock concept artist Rob Waters says, is that the design made it hard to empathize with the Gatherers. Waters noted, It was kind of cool looking, but you didn't care if you beat it to death. After shutting down a bunch of designs ranging from frogs with atom canisters attached to their butts, a dog in a wheelchair, chipmunks, robots, and more, Waters' team decided to put an old woman's face on a little girl's body. That was the turning point. At director Ken Levine's behest, Bioshock's artists used that concept as a springboard to merge cute and spooky into one design, and voila, the little sisters were born. Pikachu Pokémon Ask anybody to describe the ever-iconic Pikachu, and chances are they're all going to say the same thing. Pointy ears, red cheeks, cute and cuddly, and so on. Oh, and a mouse. Duh, everybody knows that. But as artist Atsuko Nishida tells Silicon Era, when she arrived at Game Freak, she was simply told to design an electric-themed creature. Nobody said anything about a mouse. Thus, Nishida came up with a character that she describes as Daifuku, a type of sweet Japanese rice cake with ears. Sadly, there aren't any sketches of Pikachu's original design floating around. The Daifuku-like aesthetic didn't last long anyway. Nishida dubbed her creation Pikachu, and while game designer Koji Nishino liked the name, he wanted the creature to be even cuter. Meanwhile, Nishida decided that Pikachu could store his electricity in its cheeks, similar to how squirrels carry their food, and that he should have a lightning bolt-shaped tail. Inklings Splatoon Nintendo, we love you, but we're getting a little tired of playing as the same plumber-turned-messiah of Mushroom Kingdom game in, game out. The same goes for his dinosaur sidekick Yoshi. We crave diversity. That's why we love the Splatoon games so much. A brand new universe, exciting new gameplay, and a slew of new characters to… What's that? We're being told that Splatoon actually started as a Yoshi game? Are you serious? What a bunch of… <clears throat> Sorry about that. Anyway, yeah, Splatoon started life as a Yoshi-themed title, but before long Nintendo realized that the spray-and-play Turf Wars were better suited to original characters. Early in development, blocks of tofu stood in for the ink-slinging heroes, but as production continued, the soy curds were replaced by rabbits, an animal known for being fiercely territorial. But why are rabbits shooting ink? Why are they swimming through it? Change the characters to squids, however, and everything makes a lot more sense. Still, Nintendo didn't hit upon human-looking cephalopods right away. Initial inkling designs looked like Super Mario Bros. bloopers wearing t-shirts and shoes. It's funny, but also kind of weird, and we're glad that the Big N decided to go with the hybrid Squid Kids instead. Splatoon's legions of fans probably agree. Kratos, God of War before Kratos had a kid and embraced his softer side, kind of, anyway, he was a true man's man. He killed anyone and everyone who so much as looked at him funny. He lured beautiful women to bed with a mere snap of his fingers and left them behind just as quickly. And he looked almost exactly like a Disney prince. Yes, it sounds crazy, but it's true. The early concept art tells the story. According to God of War concept artist Eric San Juan, Kratos' look didn't click until someone scrawled a quick sketch on a napkin, using Disney's take on Tarzan as reference. Look closely and you can see the similarities, especially in proto-Kratos' jawline and his mop of hair. From there, things got refined further, thank the gods. Every time we took away a piece of armor, every time we took away a helmet, a shield, we started seeing more of this animalistic side to this character. Kratos' unkempt do transformed into dreadlocks and braids before disappearing entirely, while a goatee helped balance out Kratos' sharp facial features. Adding Kratos' signature white skin and red paint and suddenly the ghost of Sparta looks like like we all remember him, and much better for it. Gordon Freeman, Half-Life Parallel universes, alternate realities, it's pretty cool to imagine what things would be like in a world just like ours, but slightly different. So this is London? Yep. Your city? That's the one. And that includes the Zeppelins? 
sure that might have been what you thought before you decided to go digging into Half-Life's data and you caught a glimpse of what could have been. That's right, everybody's favorite bespectacled, geeky hunk, Gordon Freeman, was almost a biker rocking a ZZ Top beard, a flat top, and eyes filled with rage. Just look at him. The would-be space murderer even has his own semi-official nickname, Ivan the Space Biker. If he'd been allowed to live, it goes without saying that Half-Life would have felt very, very different. Valve eventually came to its senses and changed Freeman's design, but you can still find Ivan in the game's original data, too. Install the original Half-Life on your machine and look for a little file called doctor.mdl. Yep, that's Ivan in all of his psychopathic glory, just lurking inside your computer and waiting for the perfect time to strike. And we thought the G-Man was creepy. Yeesh. Sora Kingdom Hearts you don't have to be a big Kingdom Hearts fan to recognize Sora, the series' main hero. If the floppy board shorts, round sneakers, and spiky do don't ring a bell, then the boy's signature weapon, the Keyblade, certainly will. Well, guess what? Not only did preliminary versions of Sora wield an entirely different weapon, but early on, he wasn't even human. Uh, guys? You kind of lost me a few minutes ago. According to no less of an authority than the game's lead director, Tetsuya Nomura, Sora's original design was much more beast-like than his final incarnation. Nomura told Japanese gaming mag Famitsu that Sora was envisioned as a mix between a human and a lion, complete with a tail and animal-like ears. What about his keyblade, you ask? Well, it was nowhere in sight. Instead, Sora armed himself with a regular old chainsaw. The idea behind the beastly design was to make Sora fit in among Disney characters like Donald, Goofy, and Mickey, who are all animals. In the end, however, the hero's more animalistic features were dropped. You see, Final Fantasy IX's protagonist, Zidane, already had a monkey-like tail. Some good news, though, if you're bummed that we never got a furry Sora, keep an eye out. When the kid visits the world of Monsters, Inc. in Kingdom Hearts 3, he's a whole heck of a lot fuzzier than normal.